Hello, I'm Masato Endo uh, from Toyota Motor Corporation. I'm engaged in uh, planning and development of value chain service. At the same time, I'm focused on uh, developing OSS compliance structure in Toyota. Uh, furthermore, I'm also engaged in Open Chain project. Open Chain is a uh, Linux Foundation's project to develop uh, open source compliance standard. I'm a leader uh, of Open Chain Japan Work Group uh, promotion subgroup and uh, automotive chair of Open Chain project. Today, uh, we have the joint presentation about Open Chain titled uh, The Way Forward to Obtain the Open Chain Certification. Toyota and Fujitsu are already for Open Chain Certification. So today, uh, Osaki-san from Fujitsu and Tanaka-san from Toyota will introduce the experience for Open Chain Certification. Osaki-san, please introduce you. Thank you, Endo-san. Hi, I, my name is Tomo Osaki and working for Fujitsu. And I'm working in uh, OSS compliance in, in Japan and uh, foreign countries in the Fujitsu group. And also working for the uh, open chain working group in Japan and also open chain um, project in the Linux Foundation. And I'm uh, just uh, some member of the uh, open chain uh, board uh, attending. Thank you very much. Thank you, Osaki-san. Uh, next is Tanaka-san. Tanaka-san is my car worker and uh, uh, had great effort for open sense certification. Uh, please, Tanaka-san. Thank you, Endo-san. Hello, everyone. I'm Miyu Tanaka from Toyota IP division. I'm engaged in process development and in-house education for using and contributing to the open source software at Toyota Motor Corporation. Thank you. Back to you, endo -san. Yeah, thank you so much. So uh, I'd like to start the, uh, at first, uh, I'd like to share uh, what is open chain and what is open chain standard. Uh, please for a moment. Can you see, no problem? Okay, yeah, yes. So at first, I'd like to uh, explain about the copyright management open source software. Uh, open source, every open source software had licenses and uh, we have to respect uh, each license because I think uh, open source license is the uh, intention of each developer. So, and at the same time, if the company uh, not uh, satisfied with each condition of open source license, uh, uh, they will involve uh, some legal uh, risk and uh, another risk such as a uh, litigation risk or security risk and so on. So uh, we have to manage open source license appropriately. And uh, recently, uh, the scale of the uh, software development become larger and larger. So, uh, for example, uh, even if many companies in supply chain can handle open source software appropriately, but even if only one company uh, can't uh, handle open source software, the risk of the uh, license uh, spread uh, whole supply chain. So, uh, it is very important. Each company has a good uh, open source governance structure system inside the company. And, uh, but uh, it is very difficult to develop uh, such type of the structure uh, in itself. So uh, I think uh, process standard was needed for uh, all company uh, to develop software. So uh, Linux Foundation people and the community people decided to make the open chain project. OpenGen project is a Linux Foundation's official project to develop standard of OSS license compliance. And uh, platinum member uh, in this list. So uh, very many companies uh, supported this project. For example, 
uh, platforms uh, such as uh, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Uber uh, supported this project. And uh, many industries such as semiconductor, automotive, and uh, uh, media companies also support it. So, uh, of course, uh, Jap many Japanese companies, six Japanese companies are uh, platinum members of Open Chain Project. Fujitsu, Hitachi, Panasonic, Sony, Toshiba, and Toyota. Of course, Open Chain Project is an open source project. So, everyone can join this project freely, and everyone can contribute, and everyone can use uh, output of open chain project freely. And uh, purpose is open chain is a very simple uh, because uh, to make the uh, standard for the open source process of each companies. If each uh, company uh, can take, uh, can get the conformant, open chain conformant, uh, each company's level of the open source compliance are stable and uh, become very high. So uh, uh, whole supply chains uh, level is also uh, become bottom up. And so uh, I think uh, uh, to uh, improve and uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, everyone can handling the open source program appropriately and uh, the final product uh, becomes a very safety for the open source license. And uh, three major output of open chain is a specification, curriculum, and conformance. Specification is an open chain uh, standard itself. And uh, uh, if the companies get the, uh, uh, no, no, if uh, the company satisfy with each condition of the specification, uh, companies can get conformance. And uh, I think education is very important for uh, get the uh, conformance. So each member of the open chain uh, community uh, developed uh, educational materials. This is the contents of the open chain spec 2.0. Uh, this is the overall image of the open chain spec. For example, uh, open chain spec call for the uh, for, uh, open source policy, uh, and uh, uh, the company have to uh, making the policy and uh, uh, inform uh, engineers uh, by the internet and so on. And the education and the responsibility and the liaison uh, structure have to uh, define. And uh, uh, each company has to make a uh, process uh, to make the uh, video materials and the review the license and uh, uh, how to release uh, copyright uh, or uh, source code. Uh, this is also have to making the process. So if each company uh, can get the conformant of the open chain, uh, I already say uh, the level of the open uh, supply chain will uh, improved. At the same time, some company, for example, uh, can appear. Uh, we, we already got the open chain conformant. So uh, we are safety, please use our software. So uh, we can, uh, the company can use uh, open chain conformant for sales uh, point. So already uh, many, many companies got the conformance and, uh, um, and at the same time, uh, another company also uh, uh, seek for the uh, open source conformance right now. And uh, in this fall, uh, great news uh, was coming uh, because open chain specification will become the ISO standard. Uh, this process started uh, in this May and uh, already uh, approved is finished. So uh, waiting for the publication of the ISO. So if uh, ISO publication is happened, I think uh, uh, open chain specification uh, becomes uh, more popular and uh, uh, many people uh, want to get the uh, open chain certification. So today's uh, presentation uh, from the Toyota and the Fujitsu is uh, very useful for them. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward uh, of the Tanaka-san and uh, Osaki-san's presentation.
So uh, at first, uh, I'd like to start uh, Toyota's presentation. Uh, please, uh, for a moment. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, ja, Tanaka san, please. Thank you, Endo san. I'm Miyu Tanaka from Toyota IP division. Today, I'd like to talk about our process of Open Chain certification under the title of Efforts for Open Chain Certification. Some people may not be familiar with Open Chain Certification frameworks. Also, others may not be sure how to start with for the purpose of Open Chain Certification. That's why we'll talk about what is Open Chain Certification at first. And then we'll focus on what kind of process is required to get certification and how did Toyola do? First, I'd like to introduce two reasons why Toyola focused on Open Chain Certification. The first reason will be shown and explained in this slide. And the other one will be on the next page. As many of you may know, Toyola has set the goal of making a formula change from a company that makes cars to a mobility company. Therefore, software development is very active in Toyola and software development using OSS is accelerating in our company. For example, the activities of automated gray Linux, which is a project under the Linux Foundation are performed. Please next page. The second reason for obtaining open chain certification is related to issues unique to the automotive industry. As the scale of software development has been expanding over the years, it is difficult for OEM company to complete the software development by only OEM. So Toyota is developing software with a large number of suppliers. As many suppliers are involved in the software development following the supply chain like tier two, tier one, OEM. It was important to understand what OSS is used at chain basis. However, the awareness and the governance as to OSS was different in each supply chain or different with each supplier. That's why we focused on open chain certification for the establishment of OSS compliance at supply chain overload to build a relationship with mutual trust and we are the first try to obtain certification as a representative of supply chain. Now, I'd like to introduce our challenge, uh, five challenges for open chain certification. The first challenge is related to the question. We understand the requirements for certification, but we don't know how to start with. In order to answer for the question, and we defined the necessary documents for each certification condition supported by Fujitsu. These documents are called TOCP, Toyota Open Chain Packages, in short. The policies and the processes are described in TOCP, and it is on the internal website so that each organization can easily find when necessary. The next challenge is related to the question corresponding to 3.2 management program. The OEM process and corresponding documents is not sufficient in our company, as many kinds of development are in our company. Therefore, we have prepared four processes. One, in-house development. Two, supplier development. Three, L&D in-house tools, and for contribution. Basically, we focus on in-house development process at first. 
and we consider the left three types of process based on the in-house development process. For example, regarding to supplier development, we designed a process that allows OSS information to be exchanged properly and allows OSS license to be reviewed internally. Regarding three LRD in-house tools, the process is relaxed as compared to the in-house development process. Regarding four contribution, the process was focused on uh, how quickly can Toyota contribute to the community because we wanted to encourage engineers to contribute, contribute to the community. The third challenge is related to the question corresponding to 3.1 bomb process. We don't know uh, how to manage OSS information. Therefore, we have prepared a template for the OSS information management. The template is named OSS evidence format. In this template, three kinds of check process by the person in charge, approval, and creator is described for the successful OSS information exchange. The template is based on the SPDX write format defined by the Open Chain Japan Working Group. The fourth challenge is related to the question corresponding to 1.3 review process. It takes time to understand the license. As you know, the license text is all written in English. It takes time to check its license condition in detail. Therefore, we are using the uh, simple OSS license viewer. This tool allows employee to easily understand the obligations and the disclaimers. So it is on the internal website and widely used by the engineers. The fifth challenge is related to the question corresponding to education in 1.2. How can we notify the necessity of OSS compliance to the employee who are not familiar with software development, such as purchasing department and sales department? Therefore, we have prepared educational material suitable for each of them. For example, what is OSS? What kind of risk will be arisen in the case of distribution? are written due to the important matters. We created airline documents for our employee as well. And 60,000 employees are currently educated. For engineers who are familiar with OSS, we have created a manual that explains the condition of typical OSS licenses in detail. In addition, we are providing online courses and corresponding confirmation check tests for better understanding as to OSS licenses. As you may know, this open chain spec was approved, uh, approved as an ISO standard in November, and Toyota will release the acquisition of open chain certification at the same time. As I mentioned earlier, there were various challenges for the certification, but we were able to successfully obtain the certification supported by Fujitsu. Thank you so much, Aoki-san and Osek-san and all members of this project. We hope that more companies will use this framework in the future. Finally, I'd like to talk about next step uh, we'll promote the acquisition of open chain certification to the automobile industry because the certification by only OEMs are acquired for the moment. More suppliers in the automo automotive industry, including companies in our supply chain, will be able to establish or improve OSS compliance using open chain framework. Through this kind of activity, we would like to create an environment 
We are all engineers in OEMs, and suppliers can make the best use of open source. The photos in this slide is taken at the exhibition at this year's CES. Uh, we'll conti we will continue to actively participate in open chain community activities and continue to inform everybody on information related to open chain certification with the community. Furthermore, as a member of the Japan Working Group, Automated Working Group in Open Chain, we would like to work on solving any OSS compliance issues in Japan companies and automobile companies. Uh, thank you. That's all, uh, that's all for my part. Uh, and Osam, please continue to the presentation. Thanks so much. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I also uh, uh, I also proceed, proceeded uh, to get the conformance in Toyota. Uh, so uh, we have uh, many uh, issues inside my company, but uh, community people uh, such as uh, Fujitsu-san, uh, Hitachi-san, and Sony-san uh, can uh, take uh, can uh, give uh, know-how or knowledge of the open source uh, compliance. At the same time, uh, for example. Uh, the uh, partners uh, of the foreign companies such as uh, Facebook, Google, uh, Qualcomm, IBM also uh, uh, give us uh, know-how uh, about the open source license compliance. So uh, if you also uh, join uh, OpenChain uh, project, you can get many knowledge or many know-how of the open source license compliance. So uh, please, uh, let's join, uh, please uh, join uh, the project. Yes, uh, this is a Toyota's presentation. Uh, I think uh, Toyota's is a, a hardware-oriented company. So this is uh, many uh, headaches about the, uh, to change uh, hardware to software. Uh, but our next case is uh, Fujitsu-san is a, a very long uh, history IT company. So uh, they are uh, more advanced uh, from Toyota. So, and uh, I think uh, I remember uh, about one year ago, uh, Fujitsu-san already uh, got the uh, open chain conformance. And uh, half a year ago, uh, they expand the, uh, uh, the employees of uh, open source conformant. So uh, please, Osaki-san, uh, introduce uh, your uh, presentation. Okay. Thank you, Endo-san, and let me explain my part. Hi, uh, I'm Tom Osaki, and working for Fujitsu and working for the uh, Open Chain Conformance Project. As Endo-san said, last year uh, we first um, get an uh, Open Chain Conformance for the software unit. It's uh, last November, and following that, on this March, we uh, got a uh, second uh, conformance for the platform software unit. And uh, it's you know, exceeded you know, 3,000 people related to the you know, open chain conformance. And we are now expanding the uh, open chain conformance to the subsidiary companies or network related divisions and also foreign companies. And before saying this, the um, Part just uh, uh, way for the OSS involvement differs from the organization to organization. So my presentation is focusing on that, that open chain international standards can be the yet another path for the OSS involvement. Okay. And first, the simple question. Now, how to involve uh, non-development related people or organization into uh, OSS in your company? It's a very simple question. And the reasoning matters. That means the open <coughs> OSS is just you know, impressive for the development people and the OSS advantages like a you know, code base or just you know, security or quality, many kind of things are very impressive to the development people. 
However, the OSS advantage is that MOVES developers are sometimes not impressive to non-development related people or organizations. Uh, this kind of thing is that, that something like uh, quality control people or sales people or procurement people. Many people are not uh, motivated by the OSS advantages by the developers. And also the subsidiary companies or foreign companies have a different motivation for just the OSS. And so it's not simple to just the way to proceed in a con getting a conformance in the, that we get in a November, last November or this March. And the message of this presentation is that now open chain international standard can be yet another path for now OSS employment. That means that now OSS compliance is just a breaches of the non-development related people and organization to OSS. And first, the open chain is about compliance. This is the first part. For the non-development uh, people or organization, the OSS is just uh, not conforming with their uh, everyday work in, in, at the glance. But open chain focuses on our OSS compliance governance and just in checking the uh, internal procedures or rules and the OSS uh, open chain description. And so, uh, for them, the OSS is not related to the code or just uh, uh, itself, but the, uh, they can just uh, <clears throat> know that the uh, influence for the uh, OSS uh, compliance governance to their everyday uh, procedural work. So the thing that uh, open chain is about compliance is the best way to just uh, um, involves uh, non-development related people. And second thing is that you now open chain becomes an international standard. As Anderson said, open chain is now uh, getting ready for the publishment uh, publishing of the uh, international standard ISO IEC 5230. And after open chain becomes an international standard, the OSS uh, compliance government, governance request from the OSS related organization is not uh, from the inner, uh, inner rule or <coughs> rather inner rule. It's an outer rule and uh, maybe uh, some other uh, companies like your customers or uh, up, upstream or downstream companies will uh, ask you, it's an other. And so no politics uh, related to the uh, issue you know, occurs. And so, and, that, and also the international standard related to the environment or other uh, restrictions um, that the, uh, the non-development organization are just complying. And so this is the second reason that an open chain becomes an international standard and so non-development people, organization are just, uh, um, is a, it's in a way to just get involved in the OSS compliance. And third is that the Fujitsu is an expanding conformance. That's a sign that uh, <clears throat> we are just you know, actually showing that the you know, open chain international standard is that, you know, a good way to uh, involve you know, non-development uh, people uh, into the OSS. As I said, first, last November, Fujitsu uh, got our uh, first uh, open chain uh, 2.0 conformance and following that uh, second open chain conformance for the, uh, this March and exceeding uh, 3,000 people. And so the first two organizations are very enthusiastic uh, about the uh, OSS and uh, just made uh, many contribution to the OSS community. But if you want to expand the, um, uh, the um, OSS conformance to the subsidiary companies or foreign companies, um, the situation uh, differs. And uh, in the uh, <coughs> left bottom is a uh, worldwide number of people in the Fujitsu group. 
It's in the, uh, it's a, in the EMEA or Asia or Oceania and America, so there's a lot of people uh, working uh, on, uh, outside Japan and the uh, business procedures and also internal rules are totally different from the uh, Fujitsu's uh, um, open chain conformed organizations. And we are now trying to just adjust such kind of the differences in the one and the thinking of the open chain is now the international standard. And so the, it's in a time to adjust the uh, outer route change. So um, this thing is uh, that uh, uh, the way that we show that you now open chains, you now international standardization is just a good way to become an you know, involvement. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Osaki-san. Uh, so uh, I'd like, uh, I think uh, this is very impressive presentation for us uh, because uh, we also have to expand uh, open source conformant uh, uh, to uh, inside the T Toyota Motor Corporation. And uh, at the same time, we also, uh, our uh, overseas subsidiaries also have to get the conformance. So uh, very impressive and uh, uh, we'd like to exchange the information. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, uh, Osaki-san uh, mentioned to the importance of the community. Uh, I think uh, community is uh, very important because uh, we can exchange the information and the knowledge of the open source license compliance. So uh, just a moment. Okay. Yes. Ah, Goodbye. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So uh, we uh, provide the opportunity uh, to exchange inside the community uh, by Japanese language. Uh, of course, uh, Open Chain has uh, not only Japan work group but also uh, China, India, Taiwan, and uh, Korea, and uh, uh, UK and Germany also. So uh, you can exchange the information and uh, you can. Uh, discuss about open source license compliance by uh, your uh, mother languages. And uh, in Japanese work group case, uh, this work group is very active uh, because over 200 people uh, join and uh, held uh, uh, all members meeting every uh, two or three months. And uh, seven sub work groups are also very active and to making the output uh, for uh, open, so open source com license compliance. So uh, everyone can uh, join the, uh, this work group uh, very uh, uh, freely and uh, everyone can get the uh, output of the, uh, this sub group is also freely. So uh, if interested in, uh, in uh, Japan sub work group, uh, Japan work group uh, please uh, access uh, this GitHub site. Uh, you can uh, search uh, open chain JWAG, JWG. And uh, if uh, you uh, interested in joining the uh, open chain, uh, please uh, uh, join the, at first, please join the open chain mailing list. And uh, if you want to uh, read the article of the open chain and uh, uh, open chain uh, certificate, uh, specification, uh, please uh, access the Akita Advent Calendar. Uh, we uh, upload blog every day uh, in, in, in this month. So uh, you can uh, search by Google, uh, Open Chain and Advent Calendar for Akita. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Osaki-san, uh, do you have some uh, additional comment? Yes, thank you, Endo-san. Yes. Now, Open Chain Japan Work Group is a very good community, and uh, it's it's not uh, not because uh, just now uh, we are focusing you now on the Open Chain specification, but also the, we are sharing the uh, open source compliance itself, and uh, for the uh, characteristic of the OSS compliance. Uh, it's related to the internal procedure or politics or some uh, minute rules and not published uh, in a document. So exchanging uh, the information or impression of, uh, about uh, open source compliance itself is very fruitful 
to your company's you know, open source license governance. And it's also fruitful to um, the, all, all the uh, other companies because we are connected to the supply chain. So uh, if every company just uh, fulfills an uh, open chain um, conformant, uh, co get an uh, open chain conformant, uh, we all have a uh, fruit of an uh, open chain conformance and uh, the uh, OSS related uh, and the troubles uh, will diminish and uh, we will have uh, just a uh, good result uh, from the OSS development. Yeah, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Osaki san. Uh, that's all our presentation. So uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for giving uh, this uh, precious opportunity. Yeah, uh, that's all. Thank you, Osaki-san. And thank you, Tanaka-san. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.